Hi, this is Vicki Goforth Parnell, and I have come to share a word with you that the Lord has given me. Um, this word was received on 4-12-23 at 7.45 a.m. It is called, The Time of Harvest is Now. Today is 4-14-23, and it's 1.48 p.m. But before I do, the Lord has impressed on me to speak about something. I have recently been told that if you stay in the spirit too long, you're going to hear the wrong spirit. You're going to hear wrong voices. Now, if you do stay in the spirit without balancing it out with the word, that can happen. But we are called in John 4, 23, 24. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true, worship, true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit, His Holy Spirit, and in truth, Jesus, the truth, the Word. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. John 6, 63. It is a spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak. John 1, 14. And the Word was made flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of uh, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Life, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 2 Timothy 2, 15, Study to show, show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, brightly dividing the word of truth. To worship God and to serve God and to walk in the spirit realm. You have to have a balance of both, spirit and truth. You have to worship, you have to praise, you have to operate in the spirit, but you have to ground yourself. You have to ground yourself and stay in the word. Stay in the word, and if you stay in the word, then you do not have to worry about, but you're not supposed to worry at all. You, if you stay in the word and you stay praying and you stay seeking the Lord, even when you have everyday life, you can still be spiritually minded, still serving the Lord, still in the spirit, and still play with your grandchildren. Still wash your dishes. So I disagree with that. Because scripturally, that's not sound. Because if you are walking according to the will of God, if you are serving Him, reading the word, being led by the spirit, fasting, praying, worshiping, singing to the Lord, then you're not going to listen to another voice because it says, my sheep know my voice and another they will not follow. Excuse me. Another they will not follow. And you do that by staying grounded in the word. And let me, let me just say this. I love everybody and I thank you. I thank everybody. But I speak in the name of Jesus. I am not here to fill an order I am not here to cater to any one person or, or two. I am here to deliver what the Lord says. I will not give a dream until the Lord says. And if he says never, it will not come out of my mouth. I will give a vision when the Lord says. I will give a word when he says. But if he says not, I am not giving it because I answer to God Almighty. To God Almighty and Him alone. And I take seriously sitting behind this microphone. If I had my way, you would have never seen my face. I've been just a voice behind, hiding behind you know, my journal or something. But that's not the way God called me for my position. So with that being said, I will not be manipulated in any way because I answer to God. And I love every one of you. And I pray for everyone. And it's just, it's not one certain person I am finding the more that I progress and the more as I seek God and I seek God, I get friendly suggestions, friendly cautions, friendly recommendations that are not lining up with the Word. I don't care if you have a PhD. I don't care if you have, you know, a diploma in every kind of school, ministry, Bible, what, I don't care. You got to be led and taught by the Holy Spirit. I will take the Holy Spirit over man any day. So don't send me your resume. Tell me how much passionately you love the Lord. Then I'll listen to you. 
All right, with that being said, let's pray. I've already prayed over this. We're going to pray again. And let me see. I may add these scriptures that I just read too because, like I said, they were not part of the original word. Um, I don't think I, no, I did not add these. So I will, I will call them off to you that I just read too to make sure that if you are interested in, in those scriptures too because the word is your foundation. Jesus is a word forever settled in heaven. Meaning, no matter what is shaking here, like if this Bible here gets burned up or words get changed or whatever, the original Jesus Christ is forever settled in heaven and there's no way that Satan can change that. But know this, no matter what, you read this word, you get it in, and the Holy Spirit will make sure His truth, the truth of Jesus, comes forth. So you put it in. You put it in and let the Holy Spirit draw it out. And when you need it, it will come out because that's the teacher. Uh, 1 John 2.27 says that he will teach you all things, the anointing. The anointing breaks the yoke, the anointing. The anointing is another word for the Holy Spirit. All right. So, again, today is 4.14.23. This word came forth on 4.12.23 at 7.45 a.m. And it's called time of harvest is now. And just know... Even my dearest, closest friends, if they tell me something, I take it to the Lord. Because we're all human. Even people I respect. People that I don't know if they try to give me a word. If you manage to give me a word, I will put it on the shelf. Okay, Lord, you know, I'm not accepting or rejecting. I will not come to agreement with anything ungodly. But if I don't know if this is from God or not, sometimes things don't happen immediately or they get pushed back. I put it on the shelf pray over it and then ask, leave it in the, in the hands of the Lord to such a time as it either transpires or it proves false alright let us pray Father God in heaven we worship you you are the almighty God who sits on the throne ruling and reigning in majesty righteousness and justice I come in the name of Jesus your beloved son whom I love and in the precious Holy Spirit, I welcome your presence here. And I ask that you lead me. You guide my words. You guide this prayer. Don't let me speak a word. Say anything that's not of you. As I prayed earlier. Father, I represent you. When you call, tell me to step out and to speak these words or share these dreams. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, whichever. I do so in fear and trembling, in reverent awe, because I understand the cost and the penalty. If I get up here and I lead a soul astray, their blood is on my hands. And that's something I just don't want to have on my conscience. And something that I don't want on my record, because I want to reach the lost. I want to reach every person that I can, Lord, for your name to snatch them out of hell's fire, out of Satan's grasp. Or, or to love them out. Some you pull out by fire, some you love in. Whichever you way you want it, I'm available, Jesus. I'm available. Now, in the name of Jesus, I do come against every plot, every plan, every gin, every snare, every device, every arrow, every scheme, every device, every written script. In the name of Jesus, every command, every oral text, thought, I cancel you out in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus, the kingdom of heaven. All authority is in that name and I stand in the power of that name and I speak this name boldly in the power of the anointing that's in me as it rises up in Jesus' name. Now I wrap all of you spirits, yes, doubt, negativity, unbelief that would try to come in try to to attack the people listening or seeing Father, I bind them in the name of Jesus. And I wrap them in everlasting chains according to Jude, Jude 1, 6. The chain of bondage for them in Jesus' name. And I take my pike and I pike them every one like skewers, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I take my sword of the Spirit, the word of the living God, the weapon of all weapons, the name of Jesus. And I cut your heads off. I cut your, your tongue out in the name of Jesus so you keep your foul mouth shut in Jesus' name. I sing forever, Jesus is Lord, in your ears and in your mind. You will not be able to think. I take out your spiritual eye in the name of Jesus in your eyes, and I crush them 
with the mighty hand of God in the name of Jesus, because your word says, Blessed be the Lord my strength, who teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Psalms 144, 1. And I bind these demons according to your whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That's Matthew 18, 18. And I stand on your word. I stand on your word. And your word says in Philippians 2, 9-11 through 11, that you have been given a name highly exalted above all names. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. I choose to do that now in the name of Jesus. And it's in the authority of that name that has all the power of creation behind it that I speak this. So I take you now and I cast you upon every ritual site in the name of Jesus, past, present, and future. And let it be a warning sign that there are still those that are not afraid to stand up in the glorious, glorious name of Jesus and shout hallelujah as we storm the gates of hell and we rescue those lost in Jesus' name. Now I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise and I ask you to open the eyes and the ears of all that hears this word and soften the hearts in the name of Jesus. Be it according to your perfect will, Lord, on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, encourage your people. Strengthen them and uplift them, Lord. And those who are, are in between, do I, do I accept the Lord or do I not? Holy Spirit, bring them in. And Lord, those that are lost and those who are, are not saved and those that we're desperately crying out for, Holy Spirit, lean on them and lean hard, lean heavy in Jesus' mighty name. And I give you praise because I understand the gates of hell shall not prevail against your church, your bride, those that are seeking you, those that are seeking you, those that are seeking you are those that's going to rise up in the power of the Holy Spirit and speak with boldness and be the acts, the chat, the church of acts that your word has declared we are to be and i choose to be one in jesus name with your help lord i give you praise let everything be done in jesus name and send this out on the four corners of the wind holy spirit on your wind holy spirit in jesus name i pray amen praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah he is good he is worthy to be praised no matter what you are going through he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. All right, this word again came 4:12:23 at 7:45 a.m. and he titled the time of harvest is now. And I'm going to read it as he said it. That is the way I'm supposed to do it. So if you have any discretions about not liking the way it sounded, take it to the Lord. If you have any, any, any complaints about this, take it to the Lord. I'm just being obedient. I say that in love. Because if you speak before praying, you may find yourself having to repent. All right. Which I repent all the time. Just daily. Make it a daily ritual. Daily, daily part of my prayer. Pray, 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 pray. In case I do something that I'm not aware of. All right. Right, daughter. Time is no more. The end is at hand. Mankind has failed to repent as a whole. I know. I see it all. I hear it all. I know it all. As judgment's hand moves further across your land, I take my own to me, to heaven. The clock has struck twelve. The world stage is set for war. I come for my children, my true children, who shall not endure the horrors of war like no other. War that has never been of such horror and destruction. Daughter, the time has come for my bride to rise up in my truth in these last few days these last few moments before I come for them. Arise, my bride, my love, to your call, my call upon your lives. Run to the fields, reap the fields. They are white unto harvest. Reap the souls. Reach out to the lost and do it now. Now, I say, now. Would you still be standing if you saw a massive whirlwind of nature coming in your direction no you would not run 
run, run into the fields while you can, because what's coming, my sweeping arm of devastating judgment is worse than any whirlwinds of tornadoes. I bring death, devastation, and destruction to your world by my arm of righteous judgment. I do my Father's bidding, His will. All seeds that each person sows has a reaping day. The reaping day for the wicked, unrepentant souls is now. Run to the fields, my children. Reach the lost. Wake up the sleepers for judgment's hand. I will not stay. Nor is my coming being delayed. Father says, it's my time. My time is now. So I sit waiting for his command for me to come. Come to you and take you home, my bride. My bride, my holy, righteous bride, made this way by me. Stand firm, stand true. Now is not the time to relax or relent. Put your back into the plow and keep your eyes straight forward because I come for those who are ready in me and I leave those who are not. Here are the scriptures. Mark 16, 15. 2 Timothy 1, 8 through 9. Exodus 15, 6. Psalms 89, 10 through 17. Psalms 111, 7. Ezekiel 39, 21. Luke 9, 57 through 62. Romans 3, 21 through 23. Job 33, 26. Psalms 4, 1. Psalms 9, 8. Psalms 96, 13. Proverbs 13, 6. Isaiah 54, 17. Isaiah 61, 10. Matthew 9, 36 through 38. And John 4, 35. And then the verses I quoted about worshiping and arising in spirit and truth. There's more scriptures. This is just a few that the Lord has given me. Bear with me. Turn my page. All right, those about worshiping in spirit and truth and that pulls it together that Jesus is the truth and all. John 6, 63. John 4, 23 through 24. John 1, 14. John 14, 6. 2 Timothy 2, 15. And there are many more scriptures, but that's enough to start. Start you a search if you're trying to understand. You have to have that balance. You, Because if you don't, then yes, you can go astray. If you are strictly just in the Word and no spirit, you're going to get off the false, false doctrine. You're going to be misled because you have to have that spirit and Word, truth. You have to have a balance. And you let the Holy Spirit lead you. But now if you are staying in the spirit but not getting the Word in and grounding yourself and refilling yourself with the Word, then yes, you can err. But if you are, as the Holy Spirit leads, you reading that word, and you are worshiping, you are praising, you're praying in tongues, and you're doing for those that have the gift of tongues, you can still do this without the gift of tongues, then you will hear the voice of your Savior and know it. However he speaks to you, each person may be different because he knows exactly what it takes to reach your soul. He knows exactly how to reach you. It, it's not always the same for each person. It's not always the same. Because we're not, we're, we're created the same, but we're different. We're uniquely different, but the same. Because we're all made in the image of God. I ask that you take this word and all that I've said to the Lord. Do not take my word for it. Get in the scripture. Ask Holy Spirit to lead you. He's the teacher. 1 John 2.27. He is a teacher. 
and then he will bring all things to your remembrance. So if you need the word to come forth, it will. That's John 14, 26. Stand on the word. And when you go into battle, fighting Satan, hit him with the word in the name of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus, by the name of Jesus, through the name of Jesus. Jesus is the word. Use it all. This is what you've been given to use. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. And get the next verse. That's James 4, 7. 4, 7, 8. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Because when, when Moses was in the... <laughs> Praise the Lord, it's starting to rain. <laughs> I love rain. Okay. When Moses was in the Mount Sinai with the Lord, 40 days and 40 nights, without eating or drinking in the presence of God, in the spirit, because he was spiritually in God is a spirit. He did not hear another voice. He heard God alone. He heard God. Balance. He was getting the word of God, the Ten Commandments and stuff. He's also in the spirit. You've got to have spirit and word. They go together. That's why it says study the word. You study to show yourself approved. Um, a workman unto God, rightly dividing the word of God. I don't know if I quoted that quite right. Um, Timothy 2.15. 1 Timothy or was it second? See, I get the word in. Don't always remember. Second Timothy two fifteen. But when you need it, he will pull it out. Now, now's the time for you to decide who you're going to serve. Those of you still in denial that's saying um, these are not the end of days. What is it? Matthew twenty four. I hear this all the time. And I just tell them, take it to the Lord. In Matthew 24, it seems to be the biggest thing that, that people throw at me. And, and it's not, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just going to, if the Lord says me to speak, I will. And if not, I'm going to walk away. Alright, verse 6, 24, 6. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Okay, they said, well, we're still in war. How long have we been hearing of wars and rumors of wars? You know, start looking at, at what's going on. And again, I send people back to the Euphrates. That's a clear sign. That's a clear sign that we are in the end. Because you have to have that Euphrates dried up for the king of the east to come. The king of the east to come. I have my different Bible. I usually have it marked where I can read it to you. Um, it's in the... After the two witnesses. Alright. We'll have to look that up. It's in Revelation. It's about the Euphrates. It's starting to rain. But before I go, we're going to pray. So if you don't know Jesus, I'm asking you right now, Accept him in your heart. This is the, 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 the life-changing moment. This is the decision that changes it all. Say, dear Jesus, change my life. Come into my heart. Speak to me. I believe you are the son of the living God and that you died for me. And you rose again. And I accept you into my heart as Lord and Savior. And I confess you among men and before God. In Jesus name if you made that prayer get your Bible start reading start in John John is a love letter and then from there unless he leads you otherwise that's where I would recommend get you a Bible let the, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you I love the rain Lord but I have to pray on my computer so in Jesus name protect it Lord and find your church now if you cannot find a church Get among believers that will pray with you that and pray about who, who, who to go to so that you're not deceived. And, and just pray the Lord to lead you and guide you. All right, with that being said, um, if you need prayer, you can reach us at prayer.856, no, pray, excuse me, pray. Dot, thank you very much. She's going to be saying it's, it's pray, Vicki. Pray.856, myjesus at gmail.com. Gmail.com. Lord willing, we'll have it put under here. 
You can send your questions, your prayer request. We will answer them as the Holy Spirit leads. We will pray about some before we even answer them. Some the Lord will give us answers right away, but know that they're all being prayed over. And, and if you do not um, does not require a response, you may not get a response as we get a lot of prayer requests. But know that we see them, we pray over them, they are not neglected. And those of you that continue to send prayer requests to my Facebook chat, please don't do that simply because as most of you know, there's times I go days without going on there, without checking, because I'm seeking the Lord first and foremost. And that prayer request may be lost until a later date, and you might need prayer immediately. So please, it's not that I have any qualms about you sending them, it's I don't want them being left unattended. Alright, from Tennessee, it's so gloomy out here, but it's so beautiful. <laughs> from Tennessee. Stay under the blood and know that Jesus is coming soon. God bless.